Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and with iOS 26, Apple has updated many different apps and features throughout and with the camera and photos app, there's quite a bit to talk about. So I thought we'd go over every iOS 26 camera and photo feature. The first thing is the overall design. Apple has brought in liquid glass pretty much to everything. So you can see that down here where we have glassy effects over the photo and video button. And if we switch between the two, you can see we have this glassy effect here. So they've updated it there and changed quite a bit about it. To start, we have just two options typically here at the bottom. And with those two options, you can tap back and forth to change them, but then you get a hint that there's maybe something more over here. Once you tap on it again, you'll see another menu. So there's three different things you can do here. You can tap between photos and videos, or you can slide back and forth, or you can tap on them again for additional menu options. So we've got this sort of pop out menu that shows up and it works for just about everything. So you can see our typical things here with flash, live, timer, exposure, style, and aspects. There's no longer a slider, but again, you can tap it again to get your different options. So if you wanna change the aspect ratio, you can do that. You wanna access the styles menu, you can do that. Again, tap on it, go into it, and then you can change it to live, exposure modes, and everything else. So that's one way you can get into it. Again, you can slide left and right anywhere on the screen to sort of go back and forth between which menu options you want, whether that's cinematic, time-lapse, slow motion, or anything else. And while they haven't removed any features, they have actually changed some of the options. For example, if you go into photos and maybe we're looking for night mode, they've changed the way this works as well. If I turn off the light here, you'll see that it sort of will go into light mode options here. So we'll give it a second. You'll see that little option here where we have night mode auto now. If we go into photos, again, we now have night mode, but we can only turn it on by tapping it on and off. We don't have the option to set exposure length. So again, this is something new, but completely different. And maybe this is why they're supposedly working on a pro video app, which will be a little bit different and bring new options. So if we turn that back on, of course, you can see the options change here as well. Now they've changed the options at the top also. So now you can adjust everything within the app itself. So for example, if we tap here in the upper right, we've got our options, again, the same thing. And then of course, we've got our flash option, flash auto, flash off. And then we have options for our different photo modes. So we can share with a different album, of course, or library. We can go here and change the mode of the camera itself. Resolution, maybe we'll bump it up to 48 megapixels. Then we have HEIC, or we have raw. We can switch back and forth right here without leaving the app and then going back and forth into the camera options. This is a big update in my opinion where you don't have to go back and forth anymore. So definitely an improvement there. Again, if we go into video, you'll see the same thing changes. So up here, now we have our frame rates where we had some of that before, but they're a little bit nicer to go into where we can now just adjust things such as ProRes, Log HDR, resolution from HD to 4K, frame rate from 24 to 120 frames per second. And then of course we have our exposure mode here at the top we can tap on and then we can adjust it at the bottom. So it allows you to adjust everything and it's definitely a lot more options. Some people do not like the way this works at all. I actually do like the way it works, but it's definitely different. Now, if we bring in a couple things just into the background to make it a little bit more interesting here, you can see once we tap, maybe we go into photos, go and tap the shutter button. It works just like you would expect. There's not much different here when you go into camera control, if you're utilizing that, where you can zoom in and out. Again, it's pretty much the same as it was before, where you can change everything and they haven't made much of a change there. But the overall camera app itself is definitely a lot different. Now in previous betas, you could actually swipe between here in a different direction. They've since gotten rid of that option and now it's just whatever direction you swipe matches what you're swiping. So I think this makes a lot more sense. Now, if we go into our settings and then go into camera settings, this is a little bit different than what we have with iOS 18. Here's iOS 18 on the left, iOS 26 on the right, and you can see it's mostly the same until we get down toward the bottom where we have more options here and sort of everything in a line from formats to preserve settings, to use volume for burst, scan QR codes, show detected text. So it's a little bit different, but overall much of the same. You'll see that we also have an option for indicators here where we can turn on flash, live photo and action mode, and it just makes it a little bit different. 
Again, fusion camera, portraits, prior, prioritize faster shooting, lens correction, macro control, but then we have something new here that says lens cleaning hints. This actually says it displays a suggestion when the camera lens should be cleaned to improve image quality. This works on the front and the rear facing cameras, and I've heard of people seeing it on both, where maybe they had a smudge there and they need to clean it off. So that's a nice little update there as well. We also have an option here to save captures to photo library, automatically save captures taken in messages camera to the photo library. So some nice little options here that they've added with iOS 26. So I keep that lens cleaning hint turned on just to make it a little bit easier if maybe I have a smudge there and I didn't notice it. There's also a new option when you're using AirPods. AirPods 4, AirPods 4 with active noise cancellation like we're using here, along with AirPods Pro 2 with both Lightning and USB-C all have a new option to control the camera using your AirPods. If we go into the options, scroll down, you'll see there's a new camera control area. It says camera remote, press once. We have an option to press once or press and hold or turn it off completely. This allows us to capture a photo, start or stop recording and more using either press once or press and hold. When using AirPods for camera, camera actions, if you select press once, media control gestures will be unavailable, and if you select press and hold, listening mode and Siri gestures will be unavailable. So just keep that in mind, but if I place one of these in my ear, it recognizes it and I can set it to press once, go into the camera, let's place the iPhone 1 here, we'll press the remote button here, and you'll see it activates just from me pressing the little switch on the AirPods, it blinks to let us know there's a countdown, and then it takes a photo. So again, I'll press it again, you'll see that blink behind it here, we're using the flash, letting us know there's a countdown, and then it takes the photo. So you have that option just to help you take remote photos if you want to, whether that's a selfie or something else. This year, developers also have the option to access cinematic video. So if maybe you're using video and you want to use cinematic where it recognizes maybe a person in the frame and then changes to maybe to what you're looking at when you turn your head, that is now accessible to developers where they can adjust that and also use audio mix options with studio, cinematic, in-frame, and standard. So just like we can with video, we take a video, then we can adjust the audio options afterward. That's something available to developers as well. When it comes to the Photos app, there's some updates here as well that I think a lot of people will appreciate. If we go into Photos, within Photos at the bottom, we now have a new menu option. You'll see they've once again given Photos a new design with iOS 26, and they've added liquid glass. You can see that as we scroll down. You'll see that right here, where it's sort of a glass look, and as we scroll up, it goes away and switches to Library and Collections. So this is more like it was with iOS 17, but then again, it switches back to what we have with iOS 18 as well. So for example, we also have search to the right now, and if we go to collections, this is more like we had with iOS 18, where we can fully customize it like we could before, and then if we go to library, it's more like iOS 17, where we just have our library altogether. If we go back to collections, we can now expand them or collapse them down. So if we want to see albums, we can collapse that down. Same with featured photos, shared activity, recent days, trips, anything else, you can collapse if you don't want to see it. And then of course utilities. So utilities is helpful, but if you don't want to see this, maybe they're in your way, you can get rid of them fairly quickly. Of course, it's fully customizable here where you can reorder them. And also if you go into things such as pinned, you can actually edit this as well. So change suggestions, everything else that you want to see or add any collection or album. So again, it's fully customizable this year. Something else that they've added, it now recognizes different things such as event details, also things such as sports. For example, maybe you were at a Yankees game, you took a photo, it then recognizes you were at that game and gives you context based around that. This may not be working for everyone so far, but it is something that works with that as well as concerts. So if we go into library... So you'll see here's a game I was at at Yankee Stadium, and we have a different icon down here at the bottom for events. If I go into this, it gives more information about it. So it says Mariners at Yankees, gives the information as far as when it was taken, of course, and what focal length it was at using the fusion camera. If we go into Mariners at Yankees, it shows the actual final score, and then shows details about when it was, where it was, as well as the venue and upcoming events. So this is super nice to have incorporated here. Again, it works with things such as concerts and sports information and maybe other things in the future as well. Of course, we can open up the sports app and if we go maybe to another photo similar to it, so maybe we'll go to the next one, that's the ticket. Maybe we'll go to another one I took at the stadium. It should give the same information. 
you can of course look up the landmark or go in and see that information about the game as well. So this is really nice to see incorporated into photos and something that's just a little bit new that makes it more valuable. Another new feature is spatialized scenes. You can create these within your photos. You'll see there's a new icon in the upper right. There's actually an option if you don't want this to be there. So if you go into your settings and then we go down to photos and you'll see at the very bottom of our photo settings, we have spatial photos and videos control for creating spatial photos. If we turn that off and go back to the photo we were just in, you'll see that we no longer have the option. But if we go back in, turn it back on, we'll go over here. We have to go out of the photo and back in, and then the option shows up again. If we tap on this option, it then creates what is a spatial scene and basically allows it to have depth. You can see different things move from foreground to background. As we move the phone, it gives it a depth. And this works on just about any photo. And back on the Yankee Stadium photo that I showed you before, if we turn on spatialized scene or spatial scene, it does give us that depth. But this works a little bit better on vertical photos. You can also set these for wallpaper and see them on the lock screen. So as we're setting this as a photo on the lock screen, we have this button here where we can generate a spatial scene based off of that photo. And again, move it around behind liquid glass and have whatever effect we want here. Once you go to your home screen with this, it stops, but this gives you an idea of what it looks like where the spatial scene and depth really come to life on the lock screen. Now there's also some new view settings here in the upper right. So if we go up to view, you can see things such as sort by capture date, of course, but if we go into filter, you can filter by favorited, edited, photos, videos, screenshots, shared with you and not in album. We also can go back up here. You'll see everything's fluid and fast. We've got other view options such as zoom in, zoom out, aspect ratio grid, screenshots shared with you and shared library badge. So again, some really nice options there. If we go into our collections, again, we go into our options here, maybe for utilities, you can see all the different things here that we can edit with utilities. So we have recently saved illustrations, favorites, hidden, recently deleted receipts, duplicates, handwriting, QR code, recently viewed, recently edited, recently shared documents, imports, map and recovered. And of course we can go into each one of these and just reorganize them or reset it back to default. Of course, we still have things such as hidden photos, recently deleted, as well as recovered photos as well. So overall, I like the customization. It's here if you wanna use it. I think it works great. And again, we've got media types and everything else where you can go through and just see all of your information. But if you don't wanna see it, you can hide it all together. Again, there's some options in the upper right where we can sort of reorganize this here. We can change it to the way it looks, change it so it's a little bit bigger. You'll see how it changes around like that again switch it to what it looks like, however works best for you, collapse all, reorder it, and then of course see all of your library. So some really nice options there. If we go to my icon in the upper right, you'll see that we have, of course, information about the overall photos and how they're synced. iOS 18 is on the left. And if we scroll down, you'll see in-app notification options here for both shared library suggestions and shared album activity. Everything else is mostly the same, but just sort of reworked a little bit, a little larger, and the overall options are basically identical here. Now, if we're in a photo itself, and then we go to edit that photo, then we go to our little markup option here. You'll see it looks a little bit different. We have that liquid glass design and at the bottom, we can now add the loop back. So if we want to add a loop, we can look at that sort of expand things, take a look at it and we have that option again. So this is something they've brought back to iOS 26 that people have been wanting and it allows you to edit a little bit different. Of course, there's changes throughout and Apple intelligence, of course, is improving, but hasn't really changed too much in iOS 26, other than the addition of being able to maybe create more options using chat GPT with photos. So if we go into that, if you're using Apple intelligence and go into image playground, that sort of goes along with photos, you can create a new image and then select your style based on chat GPT. So that's something specific again to Apple intelligence devices, but maybe we create a Lamborghini on the beach and see what it comes up with and see if it's realistic, what kind of car it is and give it a second to compute this. It takes a moment, it creates it and then brings that information back in and you'll see it created what appears to be a Lamborghini Huracan in yellow and the overall time it took was about 30 seconds or longer. So this can take some time, but it does allow you to create realistic photos now where it didn't before, but again, it's using chat GPT and it may be faster just to utilize their application for this instead right on the device. So other than that though, 
photos and camera has been enhanced. Of course, we have that new camera icon. Some people like it, some don't, but it reminds me of the camera we have on the back of the phone, so it seems to match. But let me know what you think of the changes within camera and photos. Do you like them? Do you think they should maybe introduce a more advanced camera app or something else? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.